What's going on guys, so we're going to be doing the NCAA Hockey Frozen Four Tournament in NHL 19 using our alumni college teams. Now, uh, for this I've actually added a few new teams uh, to be in this tournament. Uh, the first one here is the Denver Pioneers, 80 overall as you guys saw there. Uh, these three teams I've added are probably uh, not good enough to even bother doing a sim with as I don't think we've made the playoffs yet with a college team and all three of these teams are the lowest rated ones yet. So, um, Denver Pioneers here right there as they look at the logo, can't write out the whole name like they have there but um, still think that turned out pretty well. Um, also show you guys the home and away jerseys here. I think both of these are actually pretty solid. So right there you have a look at the home. You can compare it there again. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, same goes for the away. So uh, like both those jerseys. Also show you guys the details really quickly. Um, as you can see there, Denver Pioneers, all that good stuff. Also, in case you guys didn't know, Denver was actually in this year's Frozen Four. Unfortunately for them, though, they did not make the final. Now, next year, guys, we have a team a lot of people have been asking for, and that is Notre Dame. Unfortunately, you can't make Notre Dame the city, so Indiana Notre Dame is this team's name, as, of course, we didn't know, Notre Dame's in Indiana. Uh, they're 79 overall, so one below Denver there. Again, reason I didn't do, like, a full season sim for these teams, they're just solo rated. Uh, for sure would have gotten crushed so give you guys a better look at the logo there honestly i don't think it's too bad uh, if we could have just gotten like the d behind it i would have been pretty decent um secondary marks here as well you can see i got this little green thing so i actually used the bear paw logo for that which is the closest thing i could find to the four leaf clover that they have on their pants um as you guys will see here with the team uniform honestly though i think it turned out pretty sharp i'm not gonna lie so right here's a look at the home unfortunately i could not get the double white stripe on the sleeve just because they have to be the same color as the bottom of the jersey there but um, still, I think that turned out pretty good. Uh, looks pretty nice in my opinion. And then next year you have the away. Uh, this one turned out exactly how I wanted it to. So I really like that. Again, you can see the little green thing on their pants. So uh, I think the Notre Dame jerseys honestly are really nice. Um, also, show you guys the details here for Notre Dame um, in game. Can't call them the Fighting Irish, we're calling them Fearless there. And the third and final college alumni team I've added for this tournament is Minnesota Duluth, who actually just won the Frozen Four in real life. And as you guys can see here, they're also 79 overall, um, tied with Notre Dame. And I'll give you guys a look here at their logo jerseys, all that good stuff. Honestly, I think the logo turned out pretty well. Luckily, they had a Bulldog logo um, in the creation zone. Obviously, it's not exact. Their Bulldog's like looking to the side, but colors and all that, I think, turned out pretty well. Uh, team uniform here, obviously, going to be pretty similar to Minnesota Gophers. Uh, very similar colors, but right there you have the home. Again, I like it. I think it looks pretty good. They got the bulldog in the pants as well as the uh, side of the helmet. And right here you have your look at the away. A bit more simpler, just kind of all the maroon. But uh, honestly, all these college jerseys, I've said it in like the last videos, even with these three new teams, I think I just like all the college jerseys. They're just pretty simple, but at the same time, I don't know, they're really nice looking. Um, details here, uh, Minnesota Bulldogs, luckily that is a play-by-play -play team name, so... Uh, if they do make it on, obviously we'll be able to hear that. And before we get started with the tournament, guys, I want to give you a refresh on all the other college team ratings as some of them have actually changed with all the roster updates. So uh, Boston College here, 89 overall, is actually the highest rated college team. Next there you have Boston University at 84 overall. Next up here you have the Michigan Wolverines, obviously my favorite team. going to be rooting for them in this tournament. Um, they're actually now 80 overall. That's like plus two or three higher than we made the video. I think Larkin, Orensky, a few others all got upgraded. So obviously the team's now higher rated. Um, you also have the Minnesota Golden Gophers here, they're 86 overall. Um, let's see, North Dakota Fighting Hawks, 87 overall. And then finally here you have the Wisconsin Badgers, and as you can see there, just like Michigan, also 88 overall. And right here guys, look at the settings we're using for this tournament. So, starting off there with 8 teams before we actually get to the Frozen Four. Uh, playoff series length, single knockout, just like in real life. The Frozen Four, single elimination, that way anything can happen. Uh, period length there, 20 minutes, playoff tie break, continuous OT. Difficulty superstar, game style full sim, just to have the most realistic settings, but if you guys were counting, we actually have nine college teams, not eight. So before we get to the Elite Eight or whatever you want to call it, we actually have to have a qualifying game between Notre Dame and Minnesota Duluth, the two 79 overalls, to see who's actually going to be involved in this tournament. Let's get started. So right here, guys, look at the first matchup, Minnesota Duluth versus Notre Dame. Um, as you can see there, Minnesota Duluth's offense is not very good. Um, 71 overall compared to Notre Dame's 82. Their defense, though, is pretty solid. 86 compared to Notre Dame's 78. And then goaltending is pretty even. Uh, Minnesota Duluth there, 83, and Notre Dame, 79. So I'll show you guys also the rosters for both these teams. So starting off here, guys, the Minnesota Duluth roster, like I was saying, the offense is not very good. Uh, first line there, you have Joey Anderson, Alex Iafello, and JT Brown. Um, Iafello there, 80 overall, the highest rated player on this team. Then you have a few 70s and then all 60s. So um, they're basically going to rely on their defense and goaltending big time. Um, Adam Johnson, Tony Nato, and Colony there, the second line. I uh, have another Colony, I'm not sure if they're related. Uh, Peterson, Kuhlman on the third, then 
Herbert, Cameron SC, and Crandall on the fourth line again. Bottom six there is all in the 60s. It's not a good look. Uh, defense, though, like I said, is pretty solid. You got Niskanen and Falk as the top pair. Uh, Pionk, Yarison on the second pair. And then uh, Susi and Wenski as the bottom pair. Goaltending, though, is solid. They have Stalock here as the starter with Hunter Miska backing him up. Honestly, though, if the backup has to go in for any reason, team's probably going to lose anyway. And right here, guys, look at the Fighting Irish roster. So first line there, you have Palmieri, Lee, and Hinestroza. Not too bad a first line. Uh, Russ, Sheehan, and Bjorks on the second line. Condra, Evans, and Tienan on the third. And then Oglavi, Fog Fogarty, and DePauli on the fourth line. I know some of these names are probably butchering, just not really familiar with them. So pretty good forward group. Obviously a lot better than Minnesota Duluth. Uh, defense, though, is not quite as good. You got Cole and Johns on the top pair. Uh, Russo and Gross on the second pair. And then Gilbert and Ripley there on the bottom pair. Uh, goaltending, though, is honestly pretty even, like I was saying. Cal Pearson there is their starter. And then Tompkins here backing him up. Uh, Tompkins actually didn't play for Notre Dame. He just plays with Indy Fuel, obviously in Indiana. And uh, they didn't have any other backup, but... Again, the backup shouldn't be using this, so we'll get started here with the Sim and uh, see who's going to actually make this tournament. So here you go, guys. Just started the Sim. We'll see if Minnesota Duluth, the real-life champions, can actually make this tournament. So, saving the first period here, and lots of scoring. Uh, three goals from Notre Dame. Actually, two from Palmieri, one from Tynan, and then a goal there from Falk. Second period here, and Lee gets one. So Minnesota Duluth not looking too hot right now. I just think they don't have enough offense. Maybe, though, crazy comeback in the third. And they do get one goal, but unfortunately, Bjork also scores for Notre Dame. So, Minnesota Duluth, real-life champions, unfortunately, not even going to make this tournament. And as you can see here, Palmieri actually finished that game with three points, two goals, and an assist. So, we'll see if we can keep that up going into the next game. And right here, guys, look at the matchups for the first round of this tournament. Basically, I just ranked each team based on their overall. So, Boston College 89 overall is the highest rated. Therefore, the number one seed. Notre Dame was tied for the lowest rated, obviously beat Minnesota Duluth. So, they're down the number eight seed. And then you have North Dakota and Minnesota here. They're the four and five seeds. Uh, Denver, Wisconsin are 2-7 and seven respectively, and then Michigan and Boston are the 3-6, and six. so uh, should be some pretty good games here. And real quick here guys, let's have some fun. In the comment section below, comment which team you think is going to win the Frozen Four. Uh, curious to see how many of you are right with your prediction. Should be fun. And right here guys, look at the first round matchup between Notre Dame and Boston College. Boston really should win this. 90 offense, 90 defense, 87 goaltending, like pretty much 10 higher in every single category. Um, also show you guys what their jerseys look like here. So there you have Johnny Goudreau rocking the home as well as the away. Um, also give you guys a look at Boston College's lineup. Like I was saying, pretty solid. I mean, they're the highest rated team in this for a reason. Starting off here with the forward group, you have Johnny Goudreau, Kevin Hayes, Cam Atkinson. Second line here, you have Alex Tuck, Colin White, and Chris Kreider. Third line there, Miles Wood, Brian Boyle, and Patrick Eves. And the fourth line is Jimmy Hayes, Brian Gibbons, and Zach Sanford. Uh, defense here, you got Noah Hannafin and Mike Matheson. Uh, McCaution, Dumoulin on the second pair, and then Orpik and Lovejoy on the third. And then Ingle here, you have Corey Schneider as the starter, and Thatcher Demko backing him up. So, again, pretty solid lineup here. So, we'll send this game now and see what happens. Obviously, like I was saying, Boston College, the big favorite, but one game, you never know what could happen. So, first period here, and Notre Dame actually gets the first goal. Anders Lee, all right. They're actually outscoring Boston College as well. Uh, second period here. Tied up 2-2, Johnny Goudreau and Patrick Eves, Anders Lee with a second, so a big third period here. Um, let's turn this thing up to eight times and resume. I mean, anyone's game, honestly. Notre Dame still leading Boston College in shots as well. Five minutes into the third, almost halfway through, honestly, at this point. Game is still tied. Maybe we'll have an OT here, which is pretty crazy. Kind of like real-life playoffs, actually. You know, Columbus, 3-0 up on Tampa Bay. And there you have it, Palmieri with a goal and Corey Schneider. This would be a huge upset to start off the tournament. Two minutes left. Ian Cole there. I'm guessing that's an empty netter. And look at that. Very first game. Huge upset. The best team in this tournament. Boston College loses to Notre Dame 4-2. That's kind of nuts. And as you guys can see here, Andrews Lee actually had three points in that game. Two goals and an assist. So current uh, you know, leading scorer of this tournament. Uh, next matchup here is a good one. Minnesota Golden Gophers, North Dakota Fighting Hawks. Exact same offense there, 89. Uh, Minnesota though, 91D compared to North Dakota's 86. But the goaltending, North Dakota there, 85. Minnesota only has 71. So we'll see if, you know, goaltending is the deciding factor in this game. I um, also want to show you guys the jerseys here. So right there you have Blake Wheeler uh, rocking the away jersey. That's supposed to be the home. I must have messed that up. Uh, right there you have him wearing the home. And on the other side there you have Jonathan Taze in the North Dakota home jersey. And right here you have him rocking the away. Honestly, I think all of them are pretty nice. I think I also have an alternate for North Dakota. I do. I've got the green there, but... Uh, We'll have him just rocking the home jersey here. Also show you guys uh, the lineups for both these teams. So starting off here with North Dakota's roster, you got Parise, Taze, and Besser as the first line. Pretty sick, to be honest. 
Uh, Oshi, Schmaltz, and Nelson, honestly, is a very solid second line as well. Uh, Joss, Zajac, and Kajula on the third. And then Stafford, Johnson, and Rowney on the fourth. Defense here, you got Forbert and Stetcher, Ladue, Schmaltz, and then Wallenin and Poolman. Goaltending here, you have Dell as a starter, McIntyre backing him up. So, uh, honestly, pretty good team all around. Looking at Minnesota's roster now, we have Phil Kessel, Eric Halla, and Blake Wheeler as the first line. So, two pretty sick wingers there in Wheeler and Kessel. Uh, Vanek, Bukestad, Okposo on the second. Pretty good second line as well. Letary, Middlestad, and Boyd on the third. Then Rao, O'Brien, and Schrader on the fourth. Uh, defense here, you got Shea and Johnson on the top pair. Letty Schmidt, the second, and then Goligoski, Raleigh on the bottom pair. So, very solid defense, and they're going to have to be good as an in goal for them. Wilcox is the starter, only 69 overall. Not nice today, I don't think. And then they have Caspi So as the backup, who actually played for Minnesota Duluth, but uh, the Golden Gophers only have one NHL goalie, so had to use him there as the backup. Again, if he's going in for any reason, the team is probably getting spanked, so it doesn't really matter. Honestly, though, I think it's going to be the closest matchup as they're the 4 and the 5 seed, so could see this game going anyway. We're getting the simulation now. Honestly, I think the North Dakota probably takes it just due to goaltending, but I um, was really surprised by that first game, so we'll see here. First period, and Ocposo there gets the first goal for Minnesota. Second period, no scoring. It's actually a, wow, Minnesota could get a shutout potentially with a 69 goalie. Here we go, third period. And Phil Kessel gets one, beats North Dakota 2-0. So through two games, both um, upsets have happened as Minnesota was the five seed there. North Dakota was the four. Not to mention the fact they had a 69 goalie. So uh, pretty crazy. Obviously, you guys know who I'm going for. I really hope uh, the higher seed can win this one. So they actually have the exact same offense rating, both 88. Uh, Michigan there, though, has 91D compared to Boston's 87. And then goaltending, Michigan has 82. Boston University only has 71. So... Uh, maybe that will be the deciding factor right there You guys can see Michigan's home as well as their way and just like North Dakota Michigan also has an alternate Which is honestly probably my favorite jersey of theirs uh, just the all blue and yellow one I think it's so sick and right here I'll show you guys Boston University's away jersey right there You can see Jack Eichel rock in the sea um, as well as their home jersey So honestly, I think I'm gonna have Michigan uh, play in the alternates for this even though we're not gonna see it still and I'll show you guys uh, both teams' rosters here. All right, guys, so right here's a look at the Michigan Wolverines, my favorite team. First line's pretty nasty. Kyle Connor, Dylan Larkin, and Max Pacioretty. Second line now, you got Hyman, Comfort, and Kopp. Uh, third line's Hagelin, Glendanny, and Cogliano. This is actually a speed line. Uh, if you guys look at it here, Cogliano's got 94, Glendanny 88, and then Hagelin there 90. So we'll see how that third line does. And then finally, the fourth line here, you got Di Giuseppe, Camilleri, and Tyler Mott. So honestly, really good forward depth for them. Uh, defense as well is pretty solid. You got Rensky and Truba as the top pair. Can't get much better than that. Um, Hughes and Merrill on the second pair, and then Johnson and Paterno on the third pair. Uh, Hughes was another guy. When I made him, he was like a 76. E. A. Adam, the game is now an 80, so that's huge, obviously, for this team. Um, Montoya there, the starter at 80 overall. Halverson did not play for Michigan. He's just from Michigan, so when that happens, try and get like a mid-60 backup, so it doesn't affect it too much. And next year, guys, is Boston Hughes roster, so Keller, Eichel, Kachuk, first line, pretty solid. Uh, Rodriguez, Coyle, and Wilson on the second. Greenway, Benino, and Nieto on the third. With Chase on. Forsback, Carlson, and Zegris on the fourth. Uh, defense, you got Shankirk and McAvoy, so also pretty solid. Uh, Griba and Greslick and Strite and Clendenning. I know I said his name wrong. I cannot pronounce it for the life of me. Uh, Matt O'Connor there as he started, 70 overall. Laku backing him up, 63. So, Michigan, like North Dakota, has a big goaltending advantage, but... Um, so far, it's been the year of the upsets for this tournament. Same kind of in real life, honestly, with the playoffs. So um, we'll see what happens here. I'm hoping the Wolverines can pull this one out. So here we go. First game, or sorry, only game, first period. And no way. Boss is up 2-1. to one. Wilson and Eichel for, uh, goals for them. Patch ready. Forgets a goal for Michigan. Tied shots. Let's see in the second. And Kevin Keller there adds one. So it's 3-1. Michigan's going to have to have a big comeback here in the third. And unfortunately, cannot get it done. Charlie Coyle there uh, gets a goal. They actually outshot Michigan 37 to 31. So this is kind of crazy. Like so far, every single lower seed has won. If Denver beats Wisconsin, that would be kind of insane. Um, I'll show you guys the stats here. As you can see here, Wisconsin's so much higher rated. Uh, their offense is only slightly better, 86 compared to 83. But the defense, 93 to 83, is 10 better. Goaltending is 15 better, 84 compared to 69. Uh, Denver's goaltending is pretty bad, as I'm about to show you guys. Um, also, right here, you guys can see the jerseys. So, Wisconsin's home and away. I think both of those are pretty sharp. And right here, of course, you already saw them, but Denver's away and home. And right here, you can see Wisconsin's roster. Pretty sick first line there. Stefan, Pavelski, Turris. Um, second line of Kunin, Smith, and Kurdal isn't too bad. Turcott, Frederick, and Caulfield's like a young gun third line. And then Skilly, Street, and Merch is the fourth. 
Defense here, you got Suter McDonough. It's the best top pair, I think, in this tournament. Uh, Schultz Gardner, really solid second pair. Probably the best top four, honestly. That's very solid. Uh, McCabe and Smith, their bottom pair. Like, Wisconsin might have the best defense. Uh, goaltending, Elliott, very good starter. Hayton's not the best back there at 52. Luckily, backups don't matter too much. And next year, guys, we have Denver's roster. Actually had to add a few creative players for this team. So, first line, Zucker, Stasty, and Bo Bennett. I uh, was not in the game anymore, but obviously I created him. 77 overall, bomb six potential. You can see his stats there. Pretty good hands, decent shot, pretty quick. Um, obviously, though, durability there, 50. That was always his big uh, issue. Luckily, I think injuries are turned off in this. Uh, second line here, you got Nick Shore, Tyler Bozak, and uh, Dan Heinen. Borgstrom, Colborn, and Terry's the third line. And then Trevor Moore, Drew Shore, and the Lego there is the fourth line. Um, actually added both Drew Shore and Nick Shore to this team as well. Now, they were in the game previously before roster update, so just use their old stats and uh, remade them in-game. Defense here, you got Will Butcher and Scott Mayfield. Uh, Butler, Donovan, Hillman, and Dermese, Dermese, not sure. And then goaltending, like I said, isn't the greatest, but uh, Philip Larson here, another guy created. 66 overall, 20-year-old goalie. He was actually just signed by the Red Wings. I gave him low star potential there. Just pretty average goalie stats. We'll see if he can carry this team. And backing him up here, you can see he's a 60 overall goalie. So uh, that's why Denver's rating wasn't too high. Like if they had a bit higher rated goalie, they would definitely be at least, you know, 84 probably. But so far, goaltending hasn't been too much of an issue. Like Minnesota had a 69 starter, only three better, and they beat North Dakota. Obviously, Wisconsin's a better team than North Dakota, but... Uh, we'll see here if Denver can get it done. That'd be pretty crazy if all four lower seeds won in the first round. So, uh, first game here, first period. Let's see what happens. And it's a tie game. Colborn and Stephanie each with a goal. Second period, Wisconsin does get the lead there. 2-1 with a Pavelski goal. And third period, we're going to OT. Uh, Shore and Bennett get a goal each. And then Terrace gets one. Here we go, OT. No way, Nick Shore with the OT winner. So, that is insane. All four lower seeds won the first round. Uh, Boston College, West Wisconsin, Michigan, and North Dakota were the one, two, three, and four seeds all out of the tournament. I can't believe that. So right here, guys, look at the teams in the Frozen Four. You got Minnesota versus Notre Dame and Denver versus Boston U. I guess that's why the Frozen Four is single elimination because anything can happen. I still can't believe literally every high seed got knocked out. Uh, so right here, the matchup between Notre Dame and Minnesota. Minnesota's higher in every single category except for goaltending. They're actually... Um, nine below, but uh, North Dakota had even better goaltending than Notre Dame, so we'll see what happens here. Obviously, Notre Dame is the eight seed. Maybe they just go on and win this whole thing. Uh, let's find out. So first game here, first period, no scores from either team. Second period, all right, it's a close defensive matchup at 0-0. Third period, are you kidding me? Evans there gets the lone goal for Notre Dame, beat Minnesota 1-0. This is crazy. And looking at the next matchup here, guys, between Boston U and Denver, you can see Boston's got five higher offense, four higher defense, only two higher goaltending, though. So if Denver wins, that would be insane. The seven and the eight seed uh, going on to the championship game. Like, are you kidding me? First period, uh, let's see what happens. 1-1, one, one, short for uh, Denver and Coyle for Boston U. Second period, okay, wow, lots of scoring. It's like red and burgundy, so it's hard to tell the difference. Kachuk gets a couple. Shore gets another one. Zegers gets one. Heinen gets one. Boston U, though, does have the one-goal lead here, heading into the third period. And, wow, are you kidding me? Denver just says, no way. Four goals in the third. Zucker, Moore, Stastny, and Shore. I think Shore had a hat-trick there. What a game from Denver. What a comeback as well. Honestly, I would have never guessed Denver and Notre Dame in the final. It's a good thing, too. Like, my Stanley Cup playoff predictions in real life weren't the greatest. And if I had to make predictions for this Frozen Four simulation, I definitely would have gone with Boston College and Michigan in the final. Michigan winning it based on favoritism. But those two teams in the final, of course, both were knocked out first round. This is crazy. So here we go. Notre Dame and Denver is the final. Um, I'm curious, what's this matchup look like in terms of the stats? So Denver's got one higher offense there. Um, let's see, defense is three higher. Notre Dame's goaltending was 10 better, but has not seemed to matter yet. Notre Dame's run would be insane, because they actually had to play an extra game just to qualify for this. Definitely want to jump in here at the end, too, uh, to watch the celebration go down. So first period, Notre Dame-Denver, and Notre Dame has a 2-1 lead. Evans and Lee for Notre Dame, Stastny for Denver. Second period, Denver uh, crawls back there. Will Butcher with the goal, so ties it up 2-2. We're just going to increase the simulation here. Resume sim. Let's see what happens. About five minutes in now to the third period. Basically, no matter who wins here, it's an underdog story. It's a Cinderella story. That's just crazy. Notre Dame, though, does have 10 more shots. So they got a lot more pressure. 
Um, they're about to hit 30 here before Denver hits 20. And Denver, okay, Notre Dame kills off a penalty kill. And more there with a late goal, 45 seconds left. So it's just under 40 seconds left here, guys. Notre Dame has their goalie pulled. As you can see, I'm not playing right now. It's just the computers. I'm not involved in this at all. If they could make this, like, ooh, nice chance there. Russ with the rebound. This would be insane if they can actually uh, tie this game up, force it to OT. That'd be insane. I like to, like, I love watching the colleges I made actually in action in game. It's pretty cool. Someone got tipped there. They had a chance. Bo Bennett's coming down. 14 seconds left. Big block there from Johns. 10 seconds. They got like one chance here with a rush. Rust. Paul Mary. He was hot in that first game against Minnesota Duluth. Over to Henestroza. You got to find him. Tries to snipe it. Tries to be the hero. Out front. Big clapper. And Larson just shuts the door down. That looks good for the Red Wings. Larson's having a big game there. 0 0.1 seconds left. Denver's your champion. And there you have it, guys. Denver Pioneers are your Frozen Four champions. Uh, pretty sick, honestly, like I was saying. I honestly didn't see either of these teams making it out of the first round. Like, I thought Notre Dame would beat Minnesota Duluth to make it to the tournament. But after that, I thought they'd lose to Boston College. Denver would lose to uh, Wisconsin. Pretty crazy. They both made the final. And, I mean, it was a close game, too. 3-2 win there for Denver. Um, I love the fact, too, you know, we had a few uh, KHL guys on this team. And they weren't the best team by any means. They had a decent forward group. Okay defense. Good prospect goalie. I think that's a you know a sign of things to come, but um, definitely nothing crazy. Like this definitely would have been the last matchup I chose, other than Duluth versus Denver. Um, so pretty crazy to see this outcome. And your con Smythe winner, guys, was Joey Lalega, or how you ever say his name. Uh, he had four assists there, so uh, that's kind of crazy. Definitely not the name I would have expected uh, to be MVP for this tournament. And right there, you have the captain of this team, Jason Zucker. Um, hoisting the Stanley Cup. I know it's not right because it's like Frozen 4 or whatever, but uh, still pretty cool to see. And right here, guys, you have the championship pick. I love that our captain, uh, Zucker there, is still rocking the helmet. <laughs> He's never taking that thing off, I guess. Uh, so that was pretty awesome, though. I really liked how uh, this tournament turned out. Larson there, uh, first start of the game. I mean, 35 saves. He looked really good at the end. Notre Dame, yeah, outshot uh, Denver 37-22. to I can't believe how well Notre Dame played this tournament. Again, tied for the lowest rate in Minnesota Duluth. Um... I mean, I figured they'd win that qualifying game, but the run they went on was still very, very impressive. So I'm also curious to see just kind of all the stats for this tournament. There you have Stanley Cup champions, Frozen Four champions. We'll cross that out. Denver Pioneers. That's awesome. Uh, so right here, guys, we'll look at the points here. Just kind of curious. So maybe someone only played a couple games, had even more. But Lee there at four. Same with Stasty. Butcher at four as a D-man. And there he is, Joey Lalega, four assists, your Con Smythe winner. I feel like I probably would have given it to Will Butcher if anything, but I mean, whatever. Uh, Shore had three points. Brady Kachuk also had three there, only in a couple games. Pavelski, Turris, both had three points in one game. Uh, same with Stefan, so that's really impressive. Uh, it kind of sucks for them, I guess, but they did lose the eventual winners um, in Denver. And actually, you know, let's check the goalie stats here. Who was the best goalie of this tournament? Larson, of course, had the three wins. Save percentage though, Adam Wilcox, the lowest rated starting goaltender at 69 overall. Or actually that would have been Denver's and Larson who was at 66, but still, Wilcox, less than a 70, a .978, goals against. I can't believe Minnesota was able to win with those stats, like, honestly, I feel bad for them. And I you guys a final look at that playoff tree. Pretty sick, honestly, looking at that. So honestly, tournament turned out better than I expected. That was a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.